This is the secret. You must remember you can't make a mistake. Now, that's a very difficult thing to do. Because from childhood up, we have had to conform to a certain social game. And if you're going to conform to this game, you can make mistakes or not make mistakes. And so, this thing has gone into us all the time. You must do the right thing. There's certain conduct appropriate here, there's certain conduct appropriate there. And that sticks in us and gives us a double self all our lives long because we never grow up. Do you realize that the whole of life plays a game, which is a childhood game? You, there are three kinds of people. Top people, middle people, and bottom people. And there can't be any middle people unless there are bottom people and top people. There can't be any top people unless there are middle and bottom people. And so it goes. And everybody's trying to be in a top set. Well, if they're going to be there, there's got to be someone in a bottom set. And the people who do the right thing and the people who do the wrong thing. Here in Sausalito, we have this very, very plainly. Uh, there are the right people, the nice people who live up on the hill. Then there are the nasty people who live down here on the waterfront, and they grow beards, and they wear blue jeans, and they smoke marijuana. And whereas the other people on the top of the hill uh, drive Cadillacs and uh, have wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and nicely mowed lawns, and uh, their particular kind of poison is alcohol. Uh, now, the people who live on the top of the hill know that they're nice people. But they wouldn't know they were nice people unless they had some nasty people to compare themselves with. Every in-group requires an out-group. Whereas the nasty people think they are the real far-out people. Whereas those people, those hillbillies, are squares. <laughs> and they wouldn't be able to feel far out unless there were squares. See? These things simply go together. But when that is not seen, we play the games of getting on top of things all the time. And so we're in a constant state of competition as to if it's not I'm stronger than you, it's I'm wiser than you, I'm more loving than you, I'm more tolerant than you, I'm more sophisticated than you. It doesn't matter what it is, but this constant competition is going on. In terms of that competition, we can, of course, lose place and in that sense make mistakes. But what a Zen student is, is a person who is not involved in the status game. That's the real meaning of a monk. He is not keeping up with the Joneses, and to be a master, he must get to the point where he's not trying to be a master. The whole idea of your, your being better than anybody else simply doesn't make any sense at all. It is totally meaningless. Because you see everybody manifesting the marvel of the universe in the same way as the stars do and the water, and the winds, and the animals. And you see them all as being in their right places and not being able really to make mistakes, although they may think they're making mistakes or not making mistakes and playing all these competitive games. But that's their game. Now, I only say, if that game begins to bore you, and it begins to trouble you and give you ulcers and uh, all kinds of things, then you raise the problem of getting out of it. And therefore you start to become interested in things like Zen. That is simply a symptom of your growing in a certain direction. Where you are tired of playing a certain kind of game, you are as naturally flowing in another direction as if a tree were putting out a new branch.
Jeffy.